and a penis is like being with I two people. I have the best of both worlds. Are you there, caller? Yes. What is it about big breasts that you like so much? People ask me what I do. I say, you know, for the most part, I'm watching talk shows all day. I watch about five hours of talk shows a day. These are not bimbos. So that's about 100 hours of talk shows a month. Most people watch talk shows for fun. For the people at the TV show Talk Soup, it's a job. About nine men up there. Someone asks you what you do for a living. What do you tell them? <laughs> How do you describe this? There's such a proliferation of talk shows today that nobody can possibly sit down and watch 20, 22 shows a day. So we do the work for them. We watch the shows and we distill it down to the best, most memorable moment. Come on out, neighbors. <laughs> Initial reactions, whoa. Stripping is part of America. We take it seriously when it's appropriate and when it's wacky, crazy strippers, we try and treat that appropriately, too. It's a public service. Hey, no! Come on, I'm joking with you. Greg Kinnear has hosted the E! Entertainment cable show since it began a year and a half ago. It was a hit from the beginning. It really was. I mean, we don't really make anything here. We rely on these shows to come up with a great moment every day, and they all do. First of all, I wanted to make an honest living, and, and <laughs> the most honest way I could think of was by, you know, becoming a, a prostitute, and I know a lot of people want to <laughs> Finding those great moments, the producers of Talk Soup have seen it all. You ever get bored with this? Never. I'm not lying. How can you possibly get bored with a stripping monkey? I love the rape by a rattlesnake was just like something so amazing. I, I think I have a soft spot for the uh, pregnant hermaphrodite on oh. Montel Williams. <laughs> this concept of socially redeeming value, does that come into play anywhere? I don't think so. <laughs> to watch a show about deviants, I can get the same effect by going to the zoo. I mean, you know, why have it spread all across television? Howard Rosenberg also watches talk shows for a living as media critic for the Los Angeles Times. Is there any useful purpose that these talk shows serve? Well, I think, you know, on some level, I think they're very uh, comedic. On another level, if you have absolutely nothing to do with your time, maybe better that than sleeping, although it's a close call. Oh, I like the way they look. I like the way they bounce, the way they <laughs> jiggle around a little bit. The way it's it's soft. <laughs> Talk Soup senior producer Eileen Graham decides which clips to use and in what order. I think that's a better yeah. yeah a so have idea. you decided what you're going to start with? Uh, yeah, I've decided. I think I'm going to start with the uh, suburban strippers. Three bimbos like those people out there. Oh, I like that one. I mean, there's a couple other good ones. You know, Joan's good as well. I think we might tease the custom call girls. Well, I'm not a woman. I'm a female. You know, I'm yeah. beyond woman. Keep the audience coming back. You've got a dominatrix, you know, coming up after the commercial. When I'm in my dungeon, I'm wearing... Uh, leather and latex psychologically and people want to be shocked hearing drastic stories judith kuriansky is a psychologist and frequent talk show guest with her own idea why the shows are so popular they get the escape and the fantasy now a proliferation of more and more talk shows if you just look we caught up with kuriansky at a media panel in new york city endless and the topic the talk 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 is there too much talk on tv and the answer is no because people are watching them and at this point in time with the american psyche the way it is they can't get enough of them oh holy smokes it's funny, they're usually sleeping when I come in here. <laughs> Incidentally, in case you were wondering all these years, what is the Talk Soup set? You're looking at it. Yes, it's an impressive piece of furniture. Oh, I, I just think I'll go out and, like, sell my body. Um, it wasn't that simple. No, no, much more complicated than that. Do you have a sense kind of, of, of where this genre is headed? I really don't feel like I'm an expert. I still come in here every day, and I watch these shows. Well, you have to just tape it. And I'm just as stunned and as amazed today as I was, uh, you know, 18 months ago. But again, the choice, I definitely take the larger. And that's going to do it for this Talk Soup, folks. I'm Greg Kinnear. We'll see you back here tomorrow. You know, these 60 Minutes guys weren't like this at all. By the way, it had to happen. Kinnear is developing his own talk show. Thank you. That's another show. Is that it? Did we do it? Did we pull it off? <laughs> say what you will about talk television, but don't say we didn't warn you. Greg Kinnear aside, at least three new talk shows are due out this fall. The woman behind the woman. Welcome back, everybody. This is the one, the only, that's right, Talk Soup. Greg Kinnear back with you, checking out highlights 
of all the talk shows, or at least the ones that matter. Got a good show for you today. Hope you got a chance to tune into 48 Hours last night. See how all the good people behind this very little enterprise put this show together. Incidentally, once you've had the soothing, penetrating, deep, silky, velvety voice of Dan Rather mention your name, there's... I've used up my 15 minutes of fame, I think. Hey, we're back. Uh, 48 hours last night, you probably recognized Dave Bernstein. He was one of the uh, screeners here on the show who was actually featured quite prominently, wouldn't you okay. say? I'd say so, Greg. Give me just one of your quotes from last night, Dave. Well, last night in 48 hours, I told, I told Dan, no, that wasn't actually Dan, but I said that people don't have the time to watch 22 talk shows a day, so we do the work for for everybody and uh, bring them the best moments. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> we continue now with the award-winning talk soup. Actually, the man does excellent work, finds all the best moments for you. Judy Nelson gained her 15 minutes of fame when she slapped a galimony suit against tennis superstar Martina Navratilova. Did you find this clip? Uh, not me, Greg. She's recently written about their seven-year affair in a book called Love Match. Since the breakup, Nelson has become involved with feminist author Rita Mae Brown, who, as it turns out, is also a former lover of Martinez. Is that right? Wednesday, Maury Povich invited both women to a show to talk about Judy's legal battle. Take a look at this. 